Hi Dixons, I'm Hannah Dale, Primary Phase Lead at Dixons Trinity Chapel Town, where I am today. Thanks for watching this video. Please do subscribe to our platform at www.dixonsos.com. Today, I'm going to be explaining and showcasing one of the questioning techniques we use, which is no opt out. No opt out is a strategy from Teach Like a Champion, which ensures that any sequence beginning with a student unable or unwilling to answer a question ends wherever possible with that student giving the right answer. This technique is important because it promotes high expectations in the classroom for all students, complements our important questioning strategy, cold call. Please see our episode on cold calling for more information. It also increases student engagement and accountability and helps the teacher to close gaps in learning as they are identified. How do I conduct no opt out? There are four formats of no opt out, each resulting in the student providing the correct answer. How the student arrives at the correct answer depends on the format selected by the teacher. The teacher will use their professional judgement of the situation and student to select the most appropriate format. The first format is when the teacher provides the correct response and then asks the original student to repeat the correct answer. In the clip you are about to see, you will see format 1 in action. OK Year 4, we've been learning all about sound this term in our science lessons, so today I'm going to be asking you a few questions, OK? Question 1. What is a vibration? What is a vibration? Trek, Fatima. I don't know. A vibration is a fast back and forth movement. A vibration is a fast back and forth movement. Well done. The second format the teacher can use when a student does not know the answer is for another student to provide the correct response and then the teacher asks the original student to repeat it. You will see format two in the next clip. Okay, ready for question two. What will change about a sound if it enters a denser medium? What will change about a sound if it enters a denser medium? Track, Jamila. I don't know. Let's phone a friend then and see if a friend can help you. Eli, can you help Jamila? The sound will travel more slowly because it's hard to get through. Jamila. The sound will travel more, more slowly because it is hard to get through. Fantastic, well done. The third format provides extra challenge. Instead of the student being provided with the correct response to repeat, the teacher provides a cue for the student to find the correct response themselves. You will see this in the next clip. Ready for question three? What does sound usually travel through to get to our ears? What does sound usually travel through to get to our ears? Track, Marisha. I don't know. Hmm, okay, let's have a think about it. So, if the sound is coming from your mouth to my ears, it's going to travel through something. What will it be travelling through? The sound will travel through the air. Fabulous, the sound travels through the air. The fourth format is when another student, rather than the teacher, provides a cue to help the original student find the correct response themselves. You will see this in the next clip. If a sound is high pitched, what will the vibrations look like? If a sound is high pitched, what will the vibrations look like? Trek, Rayan. Mm, I don't know. Okay, let's phone a friend, but can the friend just give a clue? So not the full answer, just a clue. Ayana? Think about the speed. The vibrations will be fast, not slow. Excellent. The vibrations will be fast, not slow. As you can see, using no opt-out as a questioning strategy means that teachers have high expectations of all students because the teacher always ensures that their students are supported to answer questions correctly. I hope you have found this video useful. Don't forget to sign up to our open source platform. I look forward to seeing you soon.